Hello and welcome to the channel folks. Air of Carthage here, and yes, it's another embargo lift day. Now, some of you may have noticed I didn't cover any of the news that led up to this day with me being able to show you content for Shadows of Change, but it's because I just didn't have a lot of time to go and make a separate news video, and to be quite honest, CA gives you all a ton of news, so much so that I haven't even seen all their videos because I just haven't had time. So I don't feel like you need me to give you that, and I probably can't provide you any special um, narrative on it that other people haven't already. But what I can do today is show you some of the content, because I know that there's going to be a lot of you out there curious to see what the gameplay is like for the new lords. And as far as what I can show you today, I can show you gameplay from you and Bo, and I can show you gameplay from the Changeling. I cannot yet show gameplay from Mother Astankia. Um, so, but yeah, that's just, and I'm limited to 75 turns um, up until the next embargo drop. Um, but, I mean, we got plenty that we can cover while we're here. So I figured what I would do in this video is I would go ahead and show you Yu and Bo, um, who is the Jade Dragon. And I'm going to show you him in the um, Realms of Chaos campaign. Um, well, I, you know what, actually, let's, um, let's play Yu and Bo on the... I'm going to do some Changeling gameplay as well. Let's, um, let's actually go back. I'm going to do Immortal Empires. Yeah, switch to Immortal Empires, Lord. Bring me to my men. Uh, we're going to go back over here to... Cathay? Where am I missing them? Right here. Grand oh, Cathay, not Cathay. All right. And I'm going to go into the settings. Something cool to report here, by the way. Um, is, and if you don't want to hear this part, feel free to skip ahead. But just something neat that I really like here that they've added is this AI stats modifier. I swear, I feel like I have been asking for this for so long, and CA did it. And I know they didn't do it because of me alone. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of people that wanted this. But this allows you to finally decouple the AI from the ridiculous stat buffs that they get on the harder thing. Now, some people might be saying, well, eh, that's what makes the harder campaigns harder. You're a baby. You don't want to play on those settings. You know, I, I get it. I've played plenty of campaigns on those settings, and I've beaten them all handily. So I'm not worried about trying to prove things. What this does for me is it allows me to finally crank up the difficulty on the battle, which means that the AI is going to try and do a better job with flanking, taking out more important targets, not sitting there and letting you bombard them with cannons and all that other stuff. But I don't have to give them. Look at what they were getting. It's finally admitted. Look at this. They were getting 10% weapon damage, 8 leadership, 10% attack, 10% defense, 10% charge bonus. 20 reload skill 20 that is bananas folks that is absolutely bananas and so now i can put it down here and now i can get the ai that makes better decisions without all the cheating and it doesn't break the game's balance at all i'm very excited for it i'm actually gonna throw this on very hard very hard and it's gonna be really great because i don't have to worry about all the stupid leadership buffs breaking unit balance so i'm super excited for this like it is fantastic absolutely fantastic i'm gonna leave this other stuff default Let's start our campaign and go check out you and Bo. But yeah, that was one of the biggest changes that I am just super excited for in this update to Warhammer 3. Otherwise, you and Bo should be fun, and I will get a chance to show you some more of the units that are out there. But just right offhand, I did get to play campaign, um, and I've played ahead with you and Bo in Realms of Chaos, and it was fun. He's quite strong. Like, I would say he's a good... Like, he's a good starter faction, too, if people are just getting into the game. Cathay's pretty straightforward to understand. He has really cool mechanics. We'll take a look at those here in a minute. Um, I think they make him feel quite unique uh, in terms of gameplay. And they're fun and rewarding mechanics that you get, too. Like, the stuff that you get from them is exciting and feels like, you know, a reward for the player. Uh, which is, I think, what you want out of good campaign mechanics. Let's go ahead and start this here. An ancient power stirs in the land of dragons. A force of jade and steel. Deep in the heart of the central provinces. Wei Jin. The jewel in the crown of the celestial empire. Home to the great Wu Xin compass. Watched over 
by its vigilant guardian, the Jade Dragon, master of the meteor winds. The architect of Grand Cathay's destiny. Yet as light turns to darkness, he schemes. Commanding a vast network of unrelenting spies. No lies go undetected. No whispers go unheard. The dragon's eyes are everywhere. All right, let's check out our position on the campaign map. I must range out beyond our borders. Cathay's security demands it. So we have been tasked to start um, way off from home. <laughs> Grand Cathay, sweet homelands. Um, not anywhere near us. But we do control a province back there, which is pretty cool. Um, so we have Sheng Wu, which we control, but our army has uh, started all the way across the map and we control yet another two settlements over here we start with so it's going to be interesting in the sense that we get to, to split right away so that's pretty exciting and we'll you know kind of see how this plays out early looks like we're going to be fighting green skins one way or the other um it says the jade dragon's duty to increase celestial emperor's influence so we do have the war the wujing war compass however there are some new features in the wujing war compass and those are going to be opened um, by getting certain settlements. So like right here, um, it says we have to build the landmark in the Great Turtle Isle to get um, to be able to point it towards the uh, Nanchang uh, Basin. And then Broken Lands, we have to get the Southern Sentinels and build the building. Um, Hexodal for this one, and this one's going to be a Star Tower. So it gives us some different places that we want to aim towards. I'll go ahead and just throw this one for now. We'll point it towards the Great Bastion. Um, you could pick a number of these for different reasons. Growth, all that kind of stuff's handy early on. I uh, don't think it's going to make or break you, but, you know, up to you on how you want to play that. Um, I do start with a character here. We get an alchemist, and that's going to be nice, getting that sweet metal lore, which is going to give us a nice debuff with Plague of Rust and the ability to do some bombardments pretty early, too. Um, so that's what they want us to do. Um, it says we have to empower the compass uh, to be closer to campaign victory. When you go and look... At uh, the victory conditions, it says construct any two of the four relay buildings and empower the compass. That's your short victory. And then on the long victory, we got to get the short, and we have to construct all of these, um, and then we have to defend it. So kind of cool the way the victory works. A lot different for this character, so it should make things, I think, fun and more interesting. Um, so anyway, yeah. Let's talk about a couple other things that are going to be new here. It's going to be our steel and stone. Again, I'm sure CA probably covered this, but Steel and Stone are a couple of special resources that we use at the Matters of State. And Matters of State are abilities that you can use the Steel and Stone for, and it's it's kind of like a replenishable currency. You can add more to it over time. But if I use um, Stone, for instance, to do one of these Stone actions, that'll then like transfer those, and in four turns they'll be available over in Steel, and vice versa. Um, so they move around some, and it's kind of cool because it just, it basically balances it out where you can't use these actions every time. There's some really cool actions in here, by the way. This one right here lets you guarantee an agent success. This one here lets you um, complete settlement construction immediately. Uh, Levy the Provinces lets you complete um, a turn of recruitment for your army. I mean, there's some really cool stuff. Um, taking corruption to zero, there's a bunch that get added to down here too. Really, really neat. Um, this is fun. Definitely seems like a fun uh, system that they've added for him. So here we are at the Isle of the Crimson Skull. Um, and by the way, these are the uh, the extra compass things that they show up here as well. We still have caravans, of course, and we still have a tech tree. And we'll go ahead and start that tech tree with seasoned trackers. And let's get the battles started. We do have a new unit, two new units actually in Lotus here. We've got the Jade Lion, which is more of like a... It's, it's a magic recharge buff, which is quite nice, but it can also help you in battle has a lot of physical resistance. It's going to be a nice, um, especially early on, it's going to be a nice thing. It's immune to sight, too. And then you start with some Onyx Chromen, too, which are kind of like Cathay's version of bats. Um, but they can they can be quite useful. Let's go ahead and go kill these blue vipers. 
And yeah. All right, here is the Jade Dragon. Well, not in dragon form. But here he is on the battlefield. It's going to be a cool character. A pretty solid duelist with some nice magic uh, as well. He can protect himself. Like from the from the get go, you got Shem's Burning Hand, and he can protect himself with some. Uh, oh, I think it's a Ward Save spell. Let's see if I can remember. Let me grab it here. Yeah, it's a uh, sorry damage resistance spell. So pretty much the same thing. Um, but yeah, he's a really tough character. He does have this special Emperor's Executioner ability. So if you get a a lord or a hero down below 20%, you can click it to just get rid of them. Um, so it makes him a an exceptional duelist. You can see he has a bonus versus infantry. Uh, a lot of armor, so very nice uh, duelist spellcaster you're going to get to uh, take advantage of. Um, so let's go ahead and start targeting down the blue vipers here. I want to go straight after their lord. I'm going to see if I can bypass that unit of savage orcs. And then in the meantime, we do have some boar boys on their flank. I'm going to tie down that one with my jade dragon. I'll get you all a good shot of it here in a moment. I get a free charge with my flyer units there, so I'm going to take advantage of that. Go after some of their archers here. Alright, so jade dragon does have a breath ability that you can put to use. I'm going to do that there. And um, let's slow it down for just a second, get you all some close-ups of our <laughs> of our Jade Lion playing with these Savage Orcs. A very cool unit, it's got a very constructy type feel to it, the way it moves around, rather stiff in its animations, but um, definitely looks appropriate, you know, for a stone statue come to life. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be very nice. It does armor-piercing damage. Uh, you can see it actually has the uh, flammable thing, which makes units weak to fire, um, which is kind of cool. So if you have fire damage to back it up with, it can be quite handy. All right, let's take the uh, Jade Dragon. I'm going to hit play again and come back in here and see him dueling with Drop the Orable here. Running circles, playing Ring Around the Rosie, if you will. Maybe Duck, Duck, Goose. We're not sure which. <laughs> so, yeah, there we go. All right, let's come in after these uh, archers, and I'm going to target down the other archer. So, yeah, you can see he's very capable in a skirmish because these uh, Orc War Bosses are pretty tough. You know, they, they hit pretty hard. Uh, normally, when you're first starting a campaign, you'll be in pretty rough shape accordingly. Man, again, isn't it nice to be able to play against a more competent AI and, again, not have to deal with all the ridiculous stat buffs? I, I don't know about you. I'm enjoying it. I'm here for it. Okay, I'm going to let this duel go on a little farther. I want to see his hit points come down because I would love to show off his ability, though his army may rout before we get there, unfortunately. I'm going to bring in my Jade Lion to see if we can encourage his hit points down to the level that we want. I don't know if that was quite a hit there. It might have. All right, here comes. Yep, there's the route. He's now routing. Yeah, I'm going to try and get his hit points down because I just want to show you all what it looks like here. Even though he's going to die regardless, um, go ahead and take those hit points all the way down. Where's my... Onyx Crows. Let's go after some of these other units. Come on, get him, boys. Knock his health down. Units, when they're routing, kind of have like a weird connect. Looks like he's down to about 25%. So a little bit farther. Yep, that might be enough, actually, right there. Let's um, get our Executioner. Yeah, it's, it is enough. Leave him alone, kitty. There it goes. <laughs> oh, whoa, it didn't work. What? I've never seen that happen before. I used the execution thing and it didn't work. <laughs> what the heck? Okay, well, yeah, that's a first. It's worked for me every other time. But there you go. There's a demonstration of his not so much power, apparently. See you back on the campaign map. All right. So the Blue Vipers have been put in their place here. The Isle of the Crimson Skull is safe for now. We can build up the port. Floating Pyramid is going to need some work repair it, and then let's uh, push our attack on the Blue Vipers. Uh, I can't move any further this turn, though. It looks like we are out of movement points. Um, that army... I don't think we'll be able to get all the way to the Floating Pyramid. Sorcery. It's funny. It makes it look like we have more movement points than we actually do here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of recruiting on this turn, and we'll grab another spear, grab another archer just take everything we can the get basically at this point that's the only stuff we can do in one Warriors, one turn at the moment so it will be what it is um let's go ahead and do inspiring presence i like to get sure aim first when i'm playing cafe which buffs up all my missile units 
Um, the missile units are where you really do your damage with Cafe. Now, of course, with the proper upgrades, our infantry can do plenty of damage as well. And I intend to do so. Looks like we can build at Shang Wu, uh, which is our home settlement here. We are apparently suffering some vampiric attrition from the, the Baleful Hills here. we got some vampire counts nearby. And uh, this is going to be tricky, because I don't know whether we can sustain um, this province at home. Um, it'd be nice to have my trade goods, but at the same time, we have to be able to defend Shang Wu. We may have to go ahead and recruit an army there, which is going to take up some resources here early. I may do that. Um, I may go ahead and recruit a lord here in the first turn, which I don't know if I've ever done. And speaking of, we'll get a fun one here. We'll get the Celestial General, which this is new for Cafe. I, I Trust me, I love me some Dragon Blood and Shugigan. Uh, the Lord Magistrate, I've never been a huge fan of. Kind of a weird unit. Um, Celestial General is is very nice. Uh, it's been a good addition. They they kind of they feel like a really interesting unit in the sense they have some good support focus, but they're not terrible in melee either. Um, and then they have this Harmony Amplifier as well, so they can buff up um, the units when that Harmony thing is present. It's really quite, it's quite neat. Um, so, let's see, melee attack plus seven, weapon specialist. I like weapon specialists. Let's go with that. Celestial General. All right, and we'll put him in this province and let Must him do a little bit of protecting here. I'm just going to put a few units here just to help keep the vampires out of there because we can't afford a whole lot at the moment. We're going to be stretching our finances a little bit trying to have two armies right from the get-go, but usually Cafe gets a fair bit of money and we can put that to good use. I wonder where that C lane goes, by the way. I need to... Remind myself, I'll mouse over that whenever the turn's over. What do you all think? Are you excited for the Shadows of Change? I've heard quite a few people who are not excited about the price. I've heard some people who are excited about the content, um, and some who like the characters. I know some people were expecting different characters. Go down to the chat. Tell me what you think about Shadows of Change. How did it make you feel? Um, you know, what was your pros and cons with it? Was it all cons? You know, just tell me what you're thinking. Um, please make sure to do so respectfully to each other. Don't be getting in there and like trashing other people. It's okay for people to have their opinion of it, and I would like I would like to hear it. That's why I'm asking you. I'm not going to tell you what to think, and I would like to know what you think. Travels between the Jade Sea and the Sea of Squalls. Journey two turns. Well, I don't know where that one drops us off. The Jade Sea, I'm assuming, maybe over here. Because I don't see... Yeah, I don't see where it drops us off there, but it, it may be a kind of our our transit back and forth to Cafe, should we feel the need, but that would be a long trip, um, for sure. We can still recruit here, and I do have some cash left available to me, so I'm going to go ahead and do so. Grab a couple more units. Um, they're not going to be anything special, but we are going to need some numbers. <clears throat> in order to <clears throat> take care of business here. Apologies for that. I do have some whatever the crap it is. I don't know what's bugging me in my throat. Uh, start with cannons, which is pretty cool. Ooh, I don't know. This one's kind of nice here. I like the balance of this one. We got some guns, got some... Yeah, yeah. Let's go with the, uh, the favored here. Recruit ourselves a caravan, and we need to get our first caravan underway, but I'm going to do it on the next turn um, whenever I have a little bit more cash on hand. Where do we, hang on, where do we travel from? So this is, I don't know, our home base, I think here, yeah, Sheng Yang. Um, so we can travel over to the dwarves and pick up some pretty pretty good money in a pretty short trip. I don't have 600, so we can't dispatch that. Um, let's go ahead and dispatch the 500. I mean, that's only five turns. We can probably make it and we'll pick up some nice cash and go ahead and get it started now. <clears throat> so there we go. Caravan dispatch has been completed. Definitely want to make sure and take advantage of those caravans as Cat Day. And I would also recommend that you fight a lot of the ambush battles personally with them because the auto resolve cheats you pretty hard and will result in the destruction of your caravan a little prematurely. Um, so I would definitely recommend that you keep an eye on the, those auto resolves for the caravan. Had some experience with that over the last few days. If I look here, Spectasuma is going to actually be our province capital here. Crimson Skull, Floating Pyramid, Spectazuma, Temple of Kara. Okay, so the rest of these are owned by um, good old Hunts Marshal here, who I have not been on friendly terms with in my Bretonia playthrough. <laughs> 
fact, we were on very less than friendly terms. Oh, there's Skaven here. Oh, crap. It makes me wonder how far the Skaven, but I mean, I'm not going to not declare war on the Skaven now that I'm here. Um, he's got at least one more settlement down there, but that means the Blue Vipers are going to have to be dealt with too. But these gemstones are a little too good to pass up here early. I don't want the Skaven coming right through the back door. This may be a mistake, but we'll see. Um, it says we're going to take high casualties. It's likely because we are up against a walled settlement. Yep. Let's go ahead and wait these rats out a little. Continue the siege. So this is probably not the best move that I've made. Let's take a look to spend our stone and steel here on some matters of state. I can work on some construction. Uh, you can see we have the floating pyramid there uh, that we could do construction on. Or I could go back over and take a look at Sheng Yang. Yeah, nothing to do there. So um, I might actually hang on to this one for one more turn until we get something a little bit better to use it on. So let's go ahead and end our turn again. I like to use it on a building where there's several turns left or you have multiple buildings going at the same time because it will complete all construction in a given settlement. Um, so it's really good to use whenever you can get the most bang for the buck. But, I mean, using it to complete anything at this point is probably not a bad thing. Look at that escape and started taking attrition already. Are they not going to come out to fight me? No, they're not. Well, no one ever accused the rats of being smart. Yeah, they're going to start taking attrition. Um, we're going to continue that siege one more turn. A little bit risky here. But I don't want to get too trashed taking down the Skaven. Blue Vipers, though, are about to be right back on our case. And I've now spent money at Floating Pyramid. Oh. Execution. Yeah. I think we're actually going to have to go ahead and fight this real quick. Um, do they have Warp Lightning? Please tell me they don't have Warp Lightning. All right, they do not. Thank goodness they don't have Warp Lightning. I hate it when Skaven have Warp Lightning. All we have is a Battering Ram. Um, but, I mean, to be fair, if we get that battering ram through the gate, it's all over for these Skaven, so let's do that. Okay, I'm gonna get my troops rolled up over here. I didn't actually deploy things super intelligently because it just wasn't necessary for me to get too picky on it. Um, I'm gonna attack this gate here. And I need to get away. Yeah, they've got some Skaven slave slingers over here up in the tower. I might see if I can crunch those guys between my two flyer units, and then if any spears come up, we'll just get out of there. Um, I don't want those guys just firing away at us. Not a huge threat, because it is just slave slingers, but still. Okay, I'm gonna pop these guys. And like I said, I'm gonna try and pinch them from both directions here, hit them hard and fast, get out of here. So, rats are getting attacked by crowmen. <laughs> Cool looking units, by the way. I'm sure Zinch kind of like almost semi approves of our use of crows. Um, there we go, we got rid of a slave slain. Let's hop up and get out of there. Alright, I've got my archers inside a range and they have opened up. That should be handy for. Ooh, hold on, I got the wrong unit there. Okay, get up there and take that gate down, please. Alright, I'm gonna pull my archers up just a little bit farther. So we took down one slinger unit. It looks like it's come back from routing. We could probably do the same thing to these clan rats in quick hits, but I'm not going to get too crazy here with my flyers. I'm just going to stay out of the way of that tower and actually move right over here. The AI is probably constructing towers within the settlement as well, which is irritating, but expected. I want to get these units into position. Take the fight straight to the enemy as soon as we get through there. Let's move these units up where they're not in an easy hit range for that tower. There we go. Oh, easy, easy with the friendly fire. Scoot over over here. All right. What are my archers even firing at right now? Oh, okay, they're shooting the units on the walls. That's, that's cool. That works. That works. Okay, so our turtle-shaped battering ram is at the gate. Very cool shape, by the way. Nice design. And it is now working on the gates. It was almost a one-hit there, but I guess that's not terribly surprising, considering that it's a Skaven-built gate, and um, not a lot of pride that goes into Skaven-built things, unless it's some kind of warp-powered machinery. All right, so I'm going to send our Jade Cat inside. 
as well as our spears and other units. So here they come. I'm going to go straight for their leader over here. And we're going to try and get him. Ooh. Wow. That was, was actually a pretty nice shot there by the AI. I, I can't say that I approve of what they just did to me. Um, however, I will say it's fitting of the difficulty setting that they did that to me. Okay, let's bring our flyers on over. I'm going to come crush these slave slingers. We are already taking a nice big chunk, and I'm going to pay back that little cheeky BS they pulled with their breath attack and give them some of my own there. Looks like it bounced off a wall, maybe? I don't know what was going on. Drop a little bit of metal sorcery here. Okay, there we go. So, ooh, I don't know what... We got hit by another... Yeah, we got hit by another bit of magic over here and hit hard. Our spearmen don't have the armor and whatever that pestilent birth or pestilent breath, whatever it is. Pestilent breath, I believe. Hits them, it is, uh, it's gonna make a pretty big impact. Let's get in here and hit these clan rat spears in the back, see if we can drive this fight out a little bit quicker. Uh uh, this BS. Skaven running away. Typical Skaven. Yeah, he's gonna run away from us right there, you turd. Run away, you dang coward. Give these guys. Oh, our Chromen got stuck in there too. I wasn't paying attention. Dang. What a mistake on my part. What a mistake. Should have left someone here to help my Metal Source or, or uh, my Alchemist. My poor Chromen are going to get. Uh, I, I'm not doing them any favors. Their leader is hiding behind this, and he like acts like he's going to come back out, but I'll bet he's going to run back behind it. Let's cycle charge this again with our Long Riders. The Long Riders have some armor, and so they'll be a lot more survivable than this Chromen. And I'm not really sure why we're being held up for this long by clan rats. Maybe because my jade warriors aren't actually connecting there, I don't know. Clean that up, though. Alright, walls down. Let's go get their leader here. Now we just ran out past another barrier. He's playing keep away with me right now. I don't much appreciate it. Especially with that kind of crap going on. We are done with this guy. That should put an end to that blob. Oh, he just got swatted by our cat. Give him another good hit. Another good hit. Alright. There we go. The assassination ability works properly this time. Now let's just pour in through the gate. I've got more units to get in here. Let's uh, bring these archers up closer for some support fire. I kind of feel like the Skaven should chain route with the loss of their leader here, but looks like the uh, computer's giving them a very much benefit of the doubt here. There. All right. I mean, we have got to be close to an all-out chain route here. Alright, my Chromen. They're back. That's good. Let's go ahead and push our way forward here. There is not a lot of resistance left for the Skaven. I think sheer numbers is probably keeping them alive. Yeah, they have huge numbers. Just gonna dive that Jade Lion right into the middle of that fight. And then Yuan Bo is very capable here too in these fights because all of these are infantry sized targets he gets a bonus versus them let's keep pushing forward keep pushing forward I might actually take my flyers over here knock out some of those slingers alright I feel like the power bar is delaying the inevitable here and for once, I can't attribute that to the AI getting cheat buffs because they are not getting any cheats at the moment because we changed the settings. There we go. <laughs> we got it. I'll see you all back on the map. Well, the Long Riders do very good damage there against unarmored targets, so we did well with them. We've picked up Spectasuma, which 
Should give us access to gemstones, which will help a lot at the moment, because we are in somewhat desperate need of cash early. Um, but before we do take advantage of those gemstones, I'm actually going to uh, grab a couple more Jade Warriors here while I have the opportunity. And speaking of, we should put in a building for growth here. And then I will build the gemstone building just as soon as I get the opportunity. It looks like the Hunts Marshal was definitely intending on getting there. We should try and we should try and make nice with him. Well, I I would like to, but for some reason you don't want a non-aggression pack with me, which doesn't seem to make any sense to me. But Jingshai rebels, these guys want a non-aggression pact with me. I don't really see why that would be smart, though, because then I would have a non-aggression pack with whoever is going to be attacking. Um, let's go ahead and no get some trade agreements going. Um, balance that offer, taking some the cash. And one of the special abilities that we get, too, is whenever we open trade with a faction, we can see their territory, which is very Child helpful. Helps map. us discover Greetings. the map a whole lot quicker. Pardon my lack of nuance. Balance off. I am a warrior. We grow close. Okay, and then let's go back out here so again, the, uh, and we should be able to get the Western Provinces and important Iron Dragon. For perfect. So we're gonna. This is one of the Dragon benefits Dragon. we get with Cafe. We get extra um, relationship with them, diplomatic relationship, and it helps us get um, get in good with Cafe and helps get it united. Oh, so definitely one of our special. Capabilities there. Okay. Natural Looks like we're good there. All right, good. So we've got our income <clears throat> up a little, which is nice. And I'll be able to afford those additional Jade Warriors that I need back in Lustria. And let's go ahead and... It's saying that, obviously, that I have an unmoved character here, which that, that's true. Um, but that's actually somewhat intentional as well. Attention! Shangwu, not much of a defense, but Humility it's a defense. All, <laughs> all right, um, we got a skill point here. Let's get Searing Doom, and then the for you and Bo, I'm going to put my first point in Sure Aim. I really like the damage those ranged units can do with Cafe. find them tremendously useful. Yeah! And once we get this, um, I've got the tough decision to make of whether to run towards Floating Pyramid, but I, I think there's just the one more Skaven settlement here to my south. And West, if we can hit it and get rid of the Skaven, then I can turn. And although we might lose Floating Pyramid, which would stink, we could probably take it right back from the Blue Vipers and then get about our merry business. Oh, the Hunts Marshal is trying hard to beat me to it, but I am going to cut him off. And the AI loves to do this. They're like, hey, that settlement you want? I'm going to take it. And I'm like, no, no, you're not. Um, in fact, I might be able to trade it to him to pick up an alliance with him because this is not so worth a whole heck of a lot to me because it's just pastures but um here let's see what we can leverage with that let's so let's have a chat here we'll fart shall we and let's trade a settlement and the is it the wellsprings yes wellsprings of eternity let's offer that to him and let's see what we could get out of that um just military access huh why am I not allowed to ask him for... I really want an alliance, like a defensive alliance, but I guess we could take military access and a non-aggression pact. <clears throat> At least this gets us off on the right foot here. I don't need this settlement. It's really not going to do anything for me, and it's really close to the Druki, which then makes him a buffer state for me, and I can steal some of his all money. Right. So there you go. It's all yours, Wolfheart. I took it. Charged him $600 and some trade for his trouble. And we will now head back up to Florida. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm actually not going to force march. Okay. Um, armor for peasant long spears could be good. So could this. I actually really like going this route here with the, the dragon scales and fletching mentors. Um, this is going to make our crossbows and our jade warriors more effective. Even jade now. warriors are not elite um but you can really take them up to pretty insane levels 
and they are super helpful in these campaigns to where to the to the point where you can kind of stand toe to toe with elite infantry from other factions um especially if you're just using them as, as like a hold while your other units do the work like uh, oh, and then because of the war drums that you have access now to, the war drums are pretty spectacular. Like, they have abilities that can give them more armor or that can give them better attack. And it's really quite handy, um, which makes your, your jade lines very effective. And I like it because it really lends to Cathay's kind of turtley style of gameplay. Oh my gosh, look at this. We get to take on Streltsy. Axe guns for the win. That is amazing. So we get to take on Streltsy in our caravan. That is fantastic. I am super pumped about that. Absolutely love Streltsy. Um, so let's see here. So it's back to Suma. Um, I do want to do just a little bit more recruiting. So I'm going to move back up there. And see, I'm going to go ahead and start this construction here at the Isle of the Crimson Skull. And now I can go ahead and do this Matter of State, and we'll do the Rush construction there. Perform that, and I'll show you how that works. Now see it move that plus two over here. So... Um, and speaking of, um, something we can do, so watch this, another cool use of those matters of state. I can come back in here, recruit another Jade Warrior, grab another Bowman, and then check this out. I can come in here and do Levy the Provinces, <laughs> pick that army, perform that, and now I've actually got those two units already ready to go, and I can continue to recruit and bring myself in a better, stronger position against the Blue Viper, so I'm actually going to grab one more and one more there. I like to kind of split. Um, there we go. I think I'm good. Uh, questioning whether I should recruit a couple more units. I might recruit a couple more units here, too. They won't cost me that much. Okay. Um, they're not going to be doing a whole lot for me at the moment, which kind of sucks, but it's also kind of necessary. I like these um, Yen growth buildings because they do ultimately or no no it's the yen, the yen income buildings that buff your your trade i may bounce these around a little bit over time but right now we need a little bit of extra growth Let's see if we can get our provinces built up a little quicker yeah as you can see you and bow very interesting play style very cool start position here in the um and the mortal or in the, yeah, the mortal empires when you're playing in the realms of chaos campaign it just starts with in cafe so if you're looking for a simpler quicker campaign. You should play the one in the, um, the Realms of Chaos. Uh, control plus three. We can gain 2,000 with leadership minus three. Uh, I mean, we'll, we'll turn the brick to the Bastion. And we'll, we'll just do the good honorable Cathayan thing here. Eye of the Emperor. Wow, we can march all the way here. That is insane. So we're going to march all the way to the High Sentinel. And that will give me control of the Amira Swamps here in its entirety. Um, let's go ahead and hand out uh, one more butt kicking for the end of this episode, shall we? All right, Yuan Bo once again. I like, he, he's like Kylo Ren here with his sword. It's a pretty nice touch to him there. I also love how he can just like run straight through vegetation. <laughs> oh, and through a rock. This dude's got like a phase cloak. All right, um, here we go. I'm gonna head him straight into melee and just get things started. Get right down into business. Um, I might actually try and double up on their leader here. Let, oh crap, we got like a weird terrain feature right there. Let's give our swords their charges here, though. Charges aren't exactly oh, uh, what Cafe is known for. Send some extras in. Let's go after some of these. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, no, we got trouble coming over here on the flank. All right, so I'm going to deal with the flank trouble. Archers, let's get you focused over here. All right, their leader is going down in an absolute savage attack here between my Shade Lion and you and Bo. A little bit more damage, and we should be able to just throw the execution thing on him. I'm going to actually bring that lion back over here. The Dragon Emperor is most loyal. Yen now, we could transform into the dragon, which I haven't done yet. The reason so is because I get a bonus versus infantry in this state. Um, and I like that bonus versus infantry. Uh, we're getting hit back here by Archer Fire. Let's get that lined up here. Um, and let's do an execution here. Awesome! Executed! 
Nice. And then we've got our breath attack ready after that nice metal attack there, too. Woo, looking good. Looking good. All right, so we are cleaning up the Savage Orcs with a little bit of gusto here. I think the only thing that's left is this little pocket of infantry right over here. We can usher them along their way here shortly with their leader executed. No doubt the uh, green skins are going to be in a state of tatters. So a victory for us. <clears throat> I'll see you back on the campaign map. All right. Well, I think that is a pretty good start for us here in the campaign. Um, oh, dang, man. We can pick up a ton of gold if we relinquish that settlement. I, I want to keep it, though. It gives us a really cool foothold. And I think we'll be all right cash-wise because I'm kind of able to kick things up there with the, uh, the, the trade and stuff. So we'll attempt to hold on. Um, but that's a cool uh, offer right there. I like that, kind of giving the player the, the opportunity to mix things up as they see fit. Now, we have a little bit of a yin harmony. Now, they've changed the, the harmony balance, by the way. It's not faction-wide. It's at a local level. And when we're in this yin harmony as current, we get growth plus 10. Um, if we can get into a perfect alignment, we'll get extra campaign movement range and other things which are cool as well. For the moment, though, I'm kind of okay with it being where it is. Though, I mean, I could, I could align it real quick, but I like the extra growth. Um, that we get from it at the moment. Um, so yeah, I'm going to end the episode here for now. You all tell me what you think about you and Bo. I'm going to continue this, of course. By the way, there'll be more coming to you, quite a lot more. So keep your eyes peeled, and I will Dragon. be bringing you more of this. Actually, don't peel your eyes. That's probably a bad idea. It's something from a horror movie. Um, but I will see you all soon. Air of Carthage, signing out.